Hello all, Bandana Grandma here, and I'm in my kitchen because I'm about to make an apple pie. Um, I decided to surprise my honey with a pie tonight, thought I'd turn on the camera about 20 minutes ago. So here I am. I don't know how, I hope I'm prepared. Um, let me just see if I can pull up the chat. If not, I'll just continue without it. Let's see. Bandana Grandma. And I'm hoping this chat shows here. That means I'll be able to... Kitchen pop-up. There we are. Okay. Pull up the chat. Homemade apple pie. Looks like I'm going to see your comments. There we are. Tessie's here. Farmer Meemaw's here. Hello, honey. Kitty's here. Allison, hello. I'm feeling good, Allison. Corinne, hello. Grizz, hello. Wholesome Roots, hello. Sandy, hello. Nice to have you all here. All right, I don't know how much I'm going to be able to see these as I'm working. I'll see if I can pull them up big and put it in front of me, but... <clears throat> If not, I'll just talk to you after I'm done. So let me put this over here. All right, for the crust on my homemade apple pie, I'm going to be using my very simple, easy, quick oil and milk crust. You don't have to cut in any uh, fat or salad shortening or butter or anything like that. It's just a recipe my mother's always used. I do have a video up on it, and it's gotten some good response. So that's what I use. And I need a bowl. Okay. So let me get my crust recipe. Yeah. And I'll put it down here where you can see what I'm doing. There we go. All right, to start, we're going to put in two cups of all-purpose flour. Two cups. And to that, we're going to add a half a cup of oil and a quarter cup of milk. And I'm going to add half a teaspoon of salt, sometimes a teaspoon, but I'm going to put a half a teaspoon in. And sometimes, not always, I add a little sugar. So I'm going to put in about a teaspoon of sugar. And then I just dump this into this. And mix away. It might be better if you uh, whisk your salt and sugar through the flour first, but it really isn't that big of a deal. Now pie crust is kind of similar to bread where it depends on the humidity in your house, exactly the proportions you need to use. So you can just kind of eyeball it, but you see how quickly this comes together. A lot quicker than trying to use a salad shortening. And you still end up with large pieces, little pieces. To me, that looks just about perfect. So, let me grab my rolling pin. I'm going to put a couple pieces of wax paper down. And into the wax paper. 
paper goes the crust. Now I'm going to be doing this twice because this makes one large crust and with an apple pie I'm going to need a top and a bottom. And I'm not sure this will be enough for two crusts. It usually makes one large. But it's a very quick crust. It comes out flaky. It tastes good. And it's super easy. And it's very forgiving. You can, uh, you know, steal a little Rob Peter to pay Paul, as they say, if you need a little on one side and you're lacking on the other. And you have too much on the other, you can just grab it and move it. And it attaches very nicely. Very simple. Now I should have paid attention to the circles on this. I didn't. Here we go. Now one thing I'm a little concerned about is I couldn't find my small pie plate because I'm using my home, home canned apples for this pie. And I'm down to my last quart, and it might take a little more than that to make a nice big full pie. So this pie might be a little skinnier than usual. But you see it makes a beautiful crust. There we go. You know, they say easy as pie. Now I just take this, get my hand under it, center my pie plate, and flip it over. Peel this off. And if it rips, no worries at all. It patches up beautifully, like there was never a rip there. Okay, now see what it, see over here how I'm a little low? No problem. Just Poke it in there, just like silly or like uh, Play-Doh. It works perfect. And I'll put a little extra around because I am going to want to crimp the crust. Last time I showed this on a video, someone asked me to show how I crimped it in. A little closer up and slower so I'll try and do that this time when I end up crimping it. All right I'm gonna put this aside and make another one. And that's two cups of flour. Oops. Get it all out. Three fourths. No, one half cup of oil. Right. And a quarter cup milk. I don't know if that's what I did last time or not. I hope I didn't mess it up. And half a teaspoon of salt. About a teaspoon of sugar. I'll whisk that through first. Okay. And then in this goes. could do this crush from memory and I had a little panic attack when I started doing it thinking am I going to remember this? 
Looks like it's close enough anyway. Okay, back to the wax paper. Now see, making pie doesn't take any time at all. Nice when I have leftover crust, we can make little mini pies or we can make them jelly roll fashion where you make a long rectangle and butter it and then sprinkle cinnamon and sugar, maybe some nuts on it, roll it up, and then slice it into little spiral slices. That's what my mom used to do for us when we were kids. I know you're surprised I can remember back that far. <laughs> simpler than that, right? Super easy, forgiving pie crust. And it tastes good, too. Okay, there's our top crust. So I'll put that aside, because I have to put the filling in the pie. Let me move this. Okay, here's my quart of home canned apples. And if I were making this with fresh apples, I'd have a nice recipe for you then too, because I have a little trick that I've learned in a couple years past that really helps make the pies even better. One thing is, don't have too much liquid in there. Let me find my strainer. I'm going to pour this through the strainer to get out the extra liquid. And I also get the extra liquid out when I make it with fresh apples too. There's a special way. But I'll show you that when I make an apple pie from scratch. Okay. Here go the apples. And to that, I'm going to add a third cup, because this is less apples. Now normally I'd have more apples and i put in a half a cup, but this is a smaller portion, so I'm going to put in a third cup of brown sugar and third cup of granulated sugar. And I used to really spice up my pie a lot, but I tried it with putting less seasonings in, and I liked it better because you could taste the apples, and it was fresher tasting. So I'm going to put in maybe an eighth of a teaspoon of ginger and where I used to go heavy-handed with the cinnamon I'm only going to put in a half a teaspoon of cinnamon and just a few shakes of nutmeg I don't want too much of that either so, at the most, an eighth of nutmeg, probably less. 
Okay, stir it up. Get it combined. Now normally I would put some flour in here to help with the juices, but because I drained off a lot, I'm not going to do that. And I don't usually pre-bake my crust. I know a lot of people do. I don't usually do that. Occasionally, depends on if I know it needs it. So into the crust goes the filling. Yeah. Now see how low it is? Normally when I make it, I have it really high. But this will have to do because that's what I got left. And we'll put on our top crust. Ah, good. It ripped. That's a good thing because I want to show you something. I want to show you how easy it is to repair this. This crust is super. Okay, just give it a little put together. It'll be fine. I am going to have some left over, so I could make little snack treats with it. Okay, now to crimp it, see if I can get you in lower. And I'm going to sit down for this part. Let's see if you can see my hands here. All right. I pinch it like this and like this. And then I push this one forward and I pull this one backwards. Can you see that? So I pinch and I pinch and I forward and backwards. So my thumb pushes forward and this finger pushes backwards. Left thumb forward, right pinky backwards, a right pointer backwards. And You go like this. Now I like to sprinkle a little sugar on top because it gives it a nice glaze when you bake it. I'm going to put this in the oven for 450 for like 10 minutes and then turn it down to 350 and let it bake until it's done. This one didn't repair so well, but I guess it needs a hole for the juice to come out. There's still juice in it that has to disappear. So anyway, that, that makes a really simple quick pie. I'm going to put it in the oven. Set the timer for 10 minutes. And that's my apple pie. Next time, next time I make one, I'll make it with fresh apples. So you can see how I do that. And let me see if I can see any comments here before I say goodbye. We have a meatloaf and 
baked potatoes and corn for dinner with that apple pie. Okay, no here's questions. comments. Yeah, the pie crust, it's a winner. Let me tell you, it's a winner. And it's so easy and it's good. <laughs> Never saw this done that way either, Tessie. Yeah, it's a winner. I grew up with it. My mom always made it that way, and my sisters and I won't do it any other way. And I usually screw up a different kind. Yeah, butter or lard, that's, that's usually what people use, or Crisco. Solid shortening, I should say. Right. GMO free oil is best, for sure. It is easy. It's really easy. You saw me make two of them. <laughs> you want to all come over for pie now, huh? Yeah, I usually make a little apple out of the crust and make a little leaf and decorate the pie, but I didn't do that. Well, now that you see how easy it is, Allison, you don't have to buy store-bought anymore. Yep, Dutch crumb topping is good. I bet you Tessie knows how to do that. Large batches and freeze it. Never made pie crust. Well, Corinne, super simple. That's why they say easy as pie. Yep, you do need to try it, hon. Okay. Whoops. Skip a bit. Let's see. Bee Lady. Hello, Bee Lady. Yeah, my kitchen. Uh, it's not company ready right now, but I'll give you a tour when I'm prepared when I'm more prepared for company. I got a bunch of stuff stacked in the corner in my, on Mother's Day, all my tomato plants are going to be planted, but right now they're all over my counters, there and there, tomatoes and uh, green peppers. Hi, May Hay, Pioneer Soul. Thank you, Heather. I love these this table and chairs too. I'd always wanted a 1940s type kitchen, you know, modern, but with the flair from the 1940s. And I always drooled over the old fashioned Formica kitchen sets that had patterns on them and everything. Well, I was shopping at an area, it was kind of a consignment antique shop, and this set was there. It was a table, it had four chairs, and this hutch. Let me show you the hutch. That matched it. And when I had been at a mall and they were having some kind of a to-do where people were bringing in their antique furnitures and stuff to sell, those these tables were selling for $400, $500. It was ridiculous. I saw some for $700. So I saw this set in the antique shop and I said, well, I'm going to, I'm going to ask what's the best price they'll give me on it. And I looked and looked for a price tag and then I saw $300 for the whole set. And I said, wow, that's not bad. That's the whole set. Now the chairs I had to recover, um, the, the backs were totally worn down, uh, but I saved the, I'll show you, here's the chair. And the whole chair was made out of this stuff. And it's got, had polka dots and the flower and this trim. And the whole chair was made out of that and they were gray, this gray color. It's called uh, cracked ice from uh, uh, vinyl. And so I had, a re this was all worn down right down to the wood. 
So I, I recovered the cushions and I had somebody else cut this out and sew it on and, and recover the backs for me. So that's what I did with those. Oh, so the story. <laughs> so I went up front and I'm thinking, 300, that's good. And I just wanted it so bad and I thought, I had, I had, I had that much money because I had been saving for my kitchen. And, uh, but I went up front and I said, what's the best price you can give me on the set? And she called the owner and they said 275. So I got the whole set for 275. That was really good. Can the crust be used for savory and sweet pies? Yes, there's no reason why not. Did you forget to use a fork on the top? Yeah, I did. <laughs> I did, but it's got a crack in it, so it should be all right. Yeah, I should use a fork on the top. <laughs> Yeah, I've got on my uh, website or on my uh, in my video, sometimes I've got pictures going by of things in my kitchen and I show one of my pies made from fruit that's really stacked high with the sl with sliced uh, apples. Hi, Claire. Yeah, kitty, make some pie. <laughs> Well, you missed my pie crust part. You'll just have to watch it in the end. I made two, <laughs> two uh, a top and a bottom. All right. I just looked, I use exactly the same recipe as what you just did. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought you said you never, weren't you the one who said you didn't see it done that way? No? That must have been somebody else. Kitty. Yeah, it's really simple pie. So, Mommy, you mix the apples almost like applesauce. You mean that they're canned? Well, I can the sliced apples. And then, um, then I just season those, season them, spice them, put the sugar and the cinnamon and things in, and dump them in there. It takes less time to cook for the apples because they're already cooked, but they hold up all right. It's probably good to, when you can your apples, to slice them just a little thicker. Than, you wouldn't want them really thin because they cook so much. Right, two cups flour, half teaspoon salt, half cup oil, quarter cup milk, and if you want, you can sprinkle a little sugar in there. Sometimes we like the crust a little sweet. There's the 10 minutes. Now I'm gonna turn it down to 325. Make that 375. Yeah, 375, not 325. Uh, okay, I thought you had a video of your house. I do? Oh, I got a video of my kitchen after I remodeled it. And I have made videos in my dining room, and you've seen my living room. You've seen my very messy office. <laughs> and I'm cleaning up my back porch. Little by little, you're going to be able I to hope see. that was helpful. Now, I, I guess I'm going to have to call in my fairies because uh, I made a mess. <laughs> so uh, let me know if you make the pie crust and how it turns out for you. And uh, go ahead and video it. And if you do, say, this crust recipe came from Bandana Grandma. And I'd appreciate that. It's, it's a good recipe. I think you'll enjoy it. So thanks for coming by. In your comments below, tell me if there's anything else you want to see, and I'll try to do that next time. Bye, all.